Hello and welcome back to Red 5 Scale Models. I've been asked by a few people on Twitter um, recently how I went about painting the flamethrower effect on the Churchill Mark 7 Crocodile and I thought I would just take you through it. It's really straightforward, it's um, really simple and you get some really good results. Really? Really? So we're going to give it a go on this uh, snow speeder diorama here and look forward to taking you through it. Okay, so a little while back I made this um, snow speeder crash, small little diorama, and I had it so that there was a plume of flames, smoke trailing out the back like it had just freshly, freshly hit, and the pilots probably look it, um, made his escape um, the the LEDs I had it was like three LEDs and it was my first attempt at doing it and you couldn't see them any sort of natural light you just could not see um, so then when I thought about making the Churchill um, I decided to go big and I bought a string basically these things um, micro LEDs the 60 on this string I bought in 2.49 um, at the Christmas market actually um, I've, the ones on the crocodile are basically it's a hundred of them um, and then they give off you can see here quite a lot of light and then when they're concentrated together in a small area they really do kind of give off a lot of light <laughs> that's basically what I'm trying to say so what we're going to do next is basically start making the um, the plume of smoke flames fire um, and I'll, t I'll t briefly take you how to do the actual flamethrower effect as well. M most of it's the same, it's just how you implement it. So yeah, get straight on with that. Okay, before I go on to the um, smoke and flame effects on the snow speeder, just a quick how I went over the um, starting process of the um, crocodile. Basically, I took an ordinary cocktail barbecue skewer um, you can use toothpicks depending on or bits of old sprue whatever you want um, and then kind of just forced it into a bend overnight just left it kind of jammed in somewhere kind of at that kind of angle so that it, it takes on that kind of form because it's the flame spouting out and then um, basically took the LED and very very tightly very very close grouped wound it round and round the skewer um, so that the LEDs were really really heavily concentrated amongst each other um, I'll try and do it now quickly um, it's, it's a really finicky job but kinda because there was a hundred of them um, there was quite a lot so they kinda like that really really tightly grouped and then once I'd finished that I took some double sided tape along the whole length unstuck it and then untuck the backing off rather so that this was completely sticky like flypaper and then um, followed the steps which I'm going to go down in this next section for the rest of the fire um, I used synthetic stuffing not cotton wool, cotton wool absorbs the water this is more like a polyester this is actually out of a pillowcase um, you, can, you can tear it up you can kind of twist it into bits, you can, it adheres glue pretty well, um, you can put things like um, PVA on and it won't just go into like a, a mush, it'll still have some of that like fluffy smoke like texture, so even if you've got really small wargaming you could you bypass the LEDs or get some of those little candles, stick that on it and, and, and paint, it, paint it up how I'm going to go along, and then basically on the cocktail stick I took this, bear in mind this will have double sided tape on and basically tightly, as tight as I could, wrapped it around it like that, nice and tight, 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 tight. Yes, you are tight like a tiger. Um, and then painted it up, like I'll show you later on in the video. But obviously that's not today's video, um, we'll crack on with the rest of the stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all for, for, for this particular effect, I've drilled a hole through the base there, um, anti-cocktail stick from before, 
straight through the base, all the way through to the bottom. It's just an old IKEA picture frame. It's that's obviously where I've sealed the base. Um, it's, it looks pretty, pretty naff to be honest with you. And then I've taken some pretty ordinary garden chicken wire, we call it. Um, whether it's that universally, globally, or what, I don't know, I don't care. Um, and then I've moulded it into kind of the rough shape that I want the flames to kind of take, so that when they're on there, um, and again, you can play about this as you go, and like, when they're on there, when they're on there, it's gonna kind of look like the flames arcing up, and there's a crosswind coming across, um, just to bring a bit more interest to that side of the diorama. And then it's just a case of taking your string of lights and gently, because they're all on the, on like a copper cable, feeding them through the hole. So when I finish that, I'll get back to you. All right, so I've put the frame in there, and because these um, micro lights are on a um, like a copper copper wire in series, they're actually quite malleable. So you can kind of have them poking out of things and they'll hold a shape. Um, so when for the so the crocodile, when I got to the very end, tendrils of the flames, or for want of a better word, you could actually have those sticking out and have group three or four of them together and bend them and twist them. And it looked really effective. So that's the, the outer cage. That's just to get the plume of smoke. Um, you can see close to the engine. Um, maybe if you want do that, have maybe a bit of flame lapping up, um, play about with them, have some sticking in and out of the mesh, under the mesh, however you want to do it, um, like that, twist them, be as gentle as you can, but they are, they are quite pliable, so you can get away with a lot of things, and then it's basically just a case of taking your stuffing, getting rid of any bits of stuff that you might have picked up in it, and essentially just putting it on, use something like a brush and force it. it needs to be quite a dense amount of stuffing um, and then just force it in any nooks and crannies um, and that. So I'll mess about with this um, it's basically this process adding to it, adding to it, if you find that you it's not adhering Drop a PVA, drop a super glue, something like that might help. Um, and then I'll come back to you with the next stage. Alright, so that's the basic form of the flame there. Um, you'll see that there's definitely. You can mess about with this. You've, um, it's very, very rough this one just for the purposes of this video. Um, you'll see bits of the chicken wire and stuff sticking through. Um, but what we're going to do next is give it a coat of paint and play about with it some more so you get the idea of where to go from there. So I'll come back to you with that once it's all set up. Okay, so we've masked off as best we can um, the flame and we're going to use just a basic three tones, a yellow, an orange and a black and then it's just a case of highlighting areas Trying not to get on the model itself with the yellow in patches. And then we'll move on to an orange, and I'll show you that step next. So now we've mixed up a Translayer orange from the Citadel range. It's a nice, bright, vibrant orange. And what we'll do, continue to go in. Pick out areas. Probably a little bit more orange. And 
and you can see already it's starting to look a bit more like a flame a bit like fire and then we go back in with the black at the tips and areas that you want to have a few more of a smoke and you can as you go keep molding it as if as the um as the foam or the, the, the stuffing gets a bit wet with the paint, it's an ideal time, you get a bit messy, but it's an ideal time to start sculpting it so that when the paint dries it'll come foam to it, um, to that shape. All the while twisting and moulding, um, trying, your, trying your best to cover over any of the LEDs that are too obvious or where you can see the cage of the chicken wire underneath. Um, so yeah, I'll just keep playing about with this and before I put the black coat on. Right, so we're on to the final part of the smoke effect, uh, or the, the flame effect. Now this is the, the smoky bits of the, um, the darker um, bits of the flame. So you're going to be concentrating more on areas like the tips, the extremities. And you're going to be a little bit more sparing with this. Kind of up your own judgment, but don't go wild. Nice misty coats. And as you get to the further extremities of the flame, where you want it to kind of be tearing off into almost the smoke, um, you add a bit more black. Um, and again, just keep working with it. You can see there where you can see through and see the LED sticking through. Work with it, play about with it, mold it about. Flame in its by its very nature is quite well. It's not uniform, put it that way. So it doesn't really matter. Try and get it to follow the basic shape like you had in your head, but don't worry about it if it looks a bit different to how you thought. And go back in, a bit more black. Playing about with that, hiding the wires, hiding the wiring, jamming bits of um, with the stuffing in. Play about with it till you're out of content. Okay, so that's it finished there. Um, really quick and easy process, but you get some really good results. And it, it I think, brought a lot of like a lot more life to the scene, a lot more um, context as to what's happened there. Um, looks less more or less it's been abandoned, like it's relatively crashed quite quite recently and it's dead straightforward to do it's dead straightforward it's also pretty cheap i mean you can buy those lights on amazon i think the first batch i paid eight or nine quid for but those ones i, I spotted um with a, at a christmas sh shop the other day um over the weekend so yeah i hope i hope i've helped at least one person out there and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Red5Models and subscribe to the channel for, for more updates. And um, if you like what you see, drop a like below and I'll catch you again soon.